Hello everyone, welcome to Be Biological. Today we will discuss about photosynthesis but only about the light reaction. So let's start. So what is the purpose of photosynthesis? We use energy from light to convert inorganic compounds into organic fuels that have stored potential energy in their carbon bonds. The simplified reaction of photosynthesis is carbon dioxide along with water producing glucose and oxygen. So photosynthesis and cellular respiration are complementary processes. They are not opposite reactions even though their overall equations are the reverse. Now what are autotrophs? Organisms that obtain energy without needing to ingest other organisms. They require the input of inorganic substances from the environment. Now what are photoautotrophs? They use light energy, for example, green plants, algae, certain species of bacteria. There are generally two types of variants. One is autotroph, another one is heterotroph. The autotrophs are divided into photoautotroph and chemoautotroph, whereas heterotrophs are also divided into photoheterotroph and chemoheterotroph. Photoautotrophs are those which get their energy from light and do not obtain carbon elsewhere, for example, photosynthetic plants. Chemoautotrophs are those who get their energy from inorganic oxidation, for example, many bacteria from kingdom archaea or methanogens. Photoheterotrophs are those who get their energy from light but obtain their carbon from elsewhere. For example, a few specialized bacteria and the last chemoheterotrophs gets their energy from inorganic oxidation, for example, all animals. Here, look the diagram clockwise. First image is of a leaf. The second image is the leaf, TS of a leaf or transverse section. A leaf generally possess all the stomata at its lower surface. Above that, they have many mesophyll cells. Long are palisade mesophyll cells and short one are spongy mesophyll cells. Now, next image or diagram is the taste or vast image of mesophyll cells. Now they have green colored pigment resides in the chloroplast. The next image is of the structure of chloroplast which have this green colored pigment or chlorophyll. Now this is the structure of leaf. This is the three dimensional structure. It is a TS or transverse section. Can you tell where the cuticle is? Yes, the upper portion, the upper glossy portion of the leaf, the green colored glossy portion is known as the cuticle. Beneath that, look, this rectangle epidermis cell they are one layer thick and just below that there are palisade mesophyll cells which are dome shaped elongated structure. Just below the palisade mesophylls there are spongy mesophylls which are more about round in shape not like palisades. Then they have comma shaped guard cells and the guard cell is surrounded a pore which is known as stomata. Now the purple colored structure is the vascular bundle. 
Now, which leaf structure perform each of these functions? Please try to tell this. Which part is prevent water loss and gaseous exchange? Yes, you are right. The cuticle part, the upper glossy portion. Which part of leaf regulates gaseous exchange? Yes, the stomata. It involves the gaseous exchange. Which part of leaf transports water and nutrients? Can you guess? Yes, the vascular bundle, the purple colored cell structure that are responsible for the transport of water and nutrient throughout the leaf and the and all over the plants. Now photosynthetic part. Yes, absolutely. The mesophyll tissues, the elongated palisade mesophyll tissue and the round spongy mesophyll tissue. Here are the answers. Now, why are palisade cells long and narrow? To fit more cells in the same space for more photosynthesis. And interaction between photosynthetic site and nutrient or gas absorption site. So, they have distinctly two phases to interact in between them. They have this dome shaped structure. These are representation of the nature of light. Look at the first image. The visible light resides in 10 to the power minus 6 meters. The frequency of the light is about 10 to the power 13 to 10 to the power 14. Look the last image. This is the spectrum of visible light. This is popularly known as VIBGR because of the color resides here. Check the diagram from right to left. The so first one is violet, then indigo, then blue, then green, then yellow, then orange and then red. So they togetherly called VIBGR. Now light is a form of energy with different wavelengths. The shorter the wavelength, the greater the energy of each photon of light. Certain wavelengths of light are detectable by human eyes and seen as colors. Visible light drives photosynthesis. Group of light absorbing molecules are known as the light absorbing pigments. Chlorophyll is one such pigment in green plants. Check the diagram clockwise. First one is the chloroplast where thylakoids resides in the granum. In that thylakoid, there are cluster of pigment molecules embedded in membrane. The chlorophyll is chemically look like this. They have a head structure which is the light absorbing head known as porphyrin ring and a hydrocarbon tail. In the porphyrin ring, magnesium resides inside the molecule. In case of chlorophyll A, one of the carbon atom consists of CH3 while in case of chlorophyll B, it is CHO. The color of the pigments 
is due to wavelengths of light reflecting back into our eyes. Look the diagram very very carefully. The chlorophyll is a green pigment that absorbs mainly blue and red wavelengths. Look at the chlorophyll A peak. The high peak is in blue region and in red region. But they reflect back the green color. That is why the leaf looks green because they do not absorb the green color. They reflect it back. Likewise, in case of chlorophyll B, it also absorbs mainly blue and red color but reflects back the light, back the light green color. Carotenoids are pigments that absorb mainly blue and green but reflect back the orange and red. In the fall season, chlorophyll pigments break down first, leaving carotenoids which allow the reflection of orange and red wavelengths. That is why during fall, all the leaves become red or yellow or, or orangish in color. There are two stages of photosynthesis. First one is photo stage where light dependent reactions happens. Energy fixing reactions also occur in photo stage. They convert light energy to make ATP and NADPH which will be used to drive the next stage. And the next stage is synthesis stage. It is light independent reaction happens. It also known as dark stage or Kelvin cycle. Carbon fixing reactions happen here. It uses ATP to convert inorganic molecules to organic fuel containing stored potential energy in the bonds. We will only discuss about the photo stage here. Look at this diagram. I have drawn two images side by side. One is light reaction, another one is Kelvin cycle. In light reactions, light is obviously necessary. The input of light and H2O makes ATP, NADPH and oxygen. In case of Kelvin cycle, it takes CO2 from the atmosphere and takes ATP and NADPH producing sugar, NADP plus and ADP. So, what is the main purpose of the light reaction? Obviously, the input of water and photons of light to convert oxygen, ATP, NADPH. So the production is this three molecules, oxygen, ATP and NADPH. Three parts of light reactions. First one is photo excitation, where absorption of light photons whose energy is used to split water releasing electrons. Now electron transport harnessing the energy in electrons to form an electrochemical gradient or pump hydrogen ions against its concentration gradient. Third step is photophosphorylation or chemiosmosis where ATP synthesis due to electrochemical gradient and photon motive force. Now the first one photo excitation when atoms 
absorb energy from the sun electrons gain energy becoming excited excited electrons will fall back to ground state if it isn't transferred to an electron acceptor photosystems a cluster of pigments embedded in the transmembrane proteins of thylakoid membrane the structure of photosyn photosystem are consisting few hundred pigment molecules that mean chlorophyll a b etc reaction center contains a chlorophyll a that is located next to a primary electron acceptor look the image now light excites an electron on the reaction center of chlorophyll a primary electron acceptor traps the high energy electron before it can return to ground state so there are two photosystem one is photosystem 1 which has reaction center of chlorophyll of p700 and photosystem 2 reaction center chlorophyll is p680 the number that mean 700 680 this numbers indicate optimal wavelength for absorption different absorption preferences due to interaction with different proteins in photosystems this is the total image of thylakoid membrane proteins look the image carefully in the thylakoid membrane there is photosystem 2 then cytochrome complex then photosystem 1 then nadp plus reductase and then atp synthase so there are five main components on the thylakoid membrane they together we perform the electron transfer mechanism we will know about them in detail in next first one the photosystem 2 that mean p680 ps2 absorbs light excited electron in the reaction center chlorophyll is captured by the primary electron acceptor so p680 now missing an electron is a very strong oxidizing agent so the electrons are ex extracted from water in the lumen to replace the missing electrons on p680 as a result the water is split into oxygen and hydrogen ions this mechanism is also known as hydrolysis then the electron capture by primary electron acceptor ps2 will now be passed through an electron transport chain the electron first transferred to plastoquinone which is a mobile component within the thylakoid membrane then the electron transferred from plastoquinone to cytochrome complex protons are pumped against its concentration gradient from stroma 
across thylakoid membrane to the lumen of thylakoid. Electrons are transferred then to plastocyanin. Plastocyanin is a movable component on lumen side of the thylakoid membrane. Then electrons on PS700 or PS1 is excited by light and captured by the primary electron acceptor leaving P700 oxidized. Electrons transferred from plastocyanin to P700 replaces the electrons that were lost. Electrons undergo a second transport chain. Electrons are transferred to ferrodoxin. Ferrodoxin is an iron containing mobile component on the stromal side of the thylakoid membrane. Then the electrons transferred by enzyme NADP plus reductase to the final electron acceptor which is NADP plus which then reduced to NADPH. Now let's compare between NAD plus and NADP plus. This is the structure of NAD plus. This is the structure of NADP. Look at the circle, red circle zone where OH is replaced by one phosphate group. Now what is the purpose of this NADPH formed in that electron transfer chain? NADPH will provide the reducing power for the synthesis of sugar in the Kelvin cycle. The protons pumped into the lumen pass through ATP synthesis using the same mechanism as seen in cellular respira respiration in case of mitochondria. So ATP is produced in the stroma outside the lumen. So this is again the whole system, the five complex system which I have discussed earlier. Now what is photophosphorylation? This is the light dependent formation of ATP by chemiosmosis. Electron transport chain provides energy for photosystems to pump H plus from stroma to lumen. Look in the second step where plastoquinone and cytochrome C complex is transferring to H plus from stroma to lumen. Now look at this image. Electrochemical proton gradient provides proton motive force needed to synthesize ATP. Electron transport mechanisms are of two types. Non-cyclic electron flow and cyclic electron flow. This is the non-cyclic electron flow or the Z scheme popularly known as Z scheme because of this structure look it is almost look like Z we have already discussed about this in detail in my previous electron transport chain structures this is the same so H2 is split to produce oxygen released from cell and H plus ion released into lumen. So this is called hydrolysis occurs in photosystem 2. 
Electron transport chain helps establish electrochemical proton gradient. Now light dependent formation of ATP by chemiosmosis is known as photophosphorylation. NADP plus is the final electron acceptor that produces NADPH. It looks like Z because it is a graphical representation of energy flow of electrons. Now this is the diagram of cyclic electron flow. It happens inside the Z scheme. Look carefully. So it involves only photosystem 1 that means P700. Ferredoxin returns electrons back to cytochrome complex. Protons pumped into lumen to produce more ATP through chemiosmosis. No NADPH is produced. So what are the purpose of cyclic electron flow? Non-cyclic electron flow produces roughly equal quantities of ATP and NADPH. In the Kelvin cycle, more ATP is consumed than NADPH. Need a method to increase the ATP production without affecting NADPH is necessary. When ATP runs low, NADPH will accumulate because the Kelvin cycle slows down. Rise in NADPH levels stimulate a temporary shift to cyclic electron flow which helps to balance that and produce more amount of ATP. So this is all about the light reactions of photosynthesis. Thank you so much everyone for being with me. Best wishes to you all. And if this video helped you, please consider subscribing to my channel Be Biological. Thank you so much.